And mom said, we're just going to do laundry. So he said, I'm staying. So we weren't too sure what time he was going to work that day, if he was working that day or not. And so we went up to hop back and start doing laundry. And when we were about uh, halfway done, he, uh, he calls and said, uh, I got called in. I need to get to work. I was supposed to be at work. He said, I'm late. So I left mom there and I raced back. And uh, his brother, his older brother was here and we called him and told him if we could, if he could drop him off at work. And, and we were washing his work clothes, his Birkin clothes. So I took that, uh, brought that back down and I met him at Cal, at uh, Burger King parking lot. That's the last time I see my son and talk with him. I never seen enough of that, but he he went to work. As far as we know, from the information that we got afterwards, we didn't know what happened after that. But he got off work and he got with some friends and and uh, I don't know what happened after that. And what time did he get off work that day? Um, uh, I think around what three, four. Mm -hmm. Usually I call him, but I didn't. And usually he if calls too. He, need, too if to, he needs a ride or anything, but we. Like, and he always gets after us because we're, we're more, I think we're all too protective of him, and we. And he wanted his his space, and and he said, "Mom, Dad, I'm okay. Uh, I'll be okay. I'll, I'll call. I'll be home." So we just took his word like that. So we, we never thought. We never thought this would have happened to him. We thought well, he would always be safe with his friends. But that evening, um, uh, that Sunday evening, we were uh, we we went out and came back. And then uh, we start. We we're going to have a cookout. We had a cookout right there to the grill on the porch and. Uh, it's uh, around six or seven, just when it was dust. Then uh, we're all happy, excited. The only person that was in here is Ryan. And uh, there's uh, um, flashing lights on here, red lights right on here. We could see from here. We just. Uh, and I didn't. I didn't feel like, you know, it's part of our family. Anyone part of our family. I didn't feel that way. But I just thought, I hope every, everything's okay, no matter who it is. And, and we let it go. And that evening, our son didn't call. We got worried late that evening, getting call and the next day. And, and I had a VA appointment up in Farmington at the PMS location right there. So I went up there that morning and to go to my appointment. And Mom went to work, and, and that's when uh, she's a. Uh, I guess, I guess uh, his old his oldest brother, Randy uh, Jefferson Joe's an investigator here in Navajo Nation. He came over with pictures, and uh, he was the first one to recognize him. I mean to identify the body, hmm. and I guess he fell apart, and uh, after that, he called mom at work, and we just, our whole world just fell apart. Hmm. <laughs> then Randy called me at, at Farmington, he just told me what happened, he said, and he told us to, not to see the pictures. Because he's unrecognizable. He parted his head and the back was crushed it. So, I mean, how can it be an accident? I mean, that's, I mean, that's pretty severe. Uh, if it was somebody else's, I mean, like a, a senator or somebody very important like that, their kids, I mean. I mean, it's going to be in the news, and it's, 
it's going to be in the news like crazy. But when it's like us little people, it's nobody pays much attention to us. It's just, so, so we're, we're doing everything we can to, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know how to deal with this. We people just talk to us and talk to me, and just say we will find peace. And even even uh, brought me to question my faith. Uh, I'm told that God is merciful. So if He's like a parent and merciful, then why would He let so something like that happen to His own kids?